Hello students. In this video, we're going to find a general solution for this second order constant coefficient ODE. One of the distinctive features of this problem is that we're going to get repeated roots for our characteristic equation. So I'll write the characteristic equation. We have r squared minus 8r plus 16, where the um, exponents correspond to the order of the derivatives. The r squared corresponds to the double primed. The r corresponds to the first order derivative. And the 1 here corresponds to the zeroth order derivative. So um, I'm going to factor this uh, characteristic equation. We get r minus 4 times r minus 4. And you notice that that gives us repeated roots of r minus 4 squared. So um, <clears throat> we have uh, really uh, one solution. Now you might say, well, could I just write plus C2 e to the 4x? But that's a repeat of this solution. Um, and uh, there'd be no reason to do that. Um, you could just factor out the e to the 4x and then add C1 plus C2 and get yourself another arbitrary constant, C3, times e to the 4x. So there's no point in doing that. So right now, you have one solution to this ODE. And uh, we actually do expect four. Uh, I'm sorry, two solutions, two. I'm looking at the four here. We expect two solutions because this is a second order ODE. So we expect another linearly uh, independent solution. Um, I'm not going to get into the theory of that right now. I do in another video. Um, and I also justify w why we're going to do the next step that we're going to do. So first, um, I'm just going to check the solution. I'm going to write the ODE um, vertically here. So y double prime minus 8y prime plus 16y. Um, that does equal 0. Um, I like to write it vertically because then I just set up my derivatives to the right here. And it makes it real easy to check. Um, so y double primed, um, the two 4s drop down, I get a 16. Um, y primed, I get a 4 drops down, but then the minus 8 times the 4 gives me minus 32. And then 16y is just uh, 16 times that. And sure enough, um, it does check. If you add up all these terms, 16 plus 16 is 32, minus 32 is 0. So that is, in fact, a solution to this ODE. However, um, like I said, we expect two linearly independent solutions. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, multiply the solution by x. Now, it seems like a strange maneuver. Um, I do explain why in um, a second video to this one. But um, let's just, for now, just verify that this, does, this solution does, in fact, satisfy this ODE. So once again, I'll write my um, ODE vertically. And 16 times y is 16c2x e to the 4x. If I take the derivative, um, I have to use the product rule. So the derivative of x is 1, so I get c2e to the 4x. The derivative of e to the 4x, the 4 drops down, and I have 4c2x e to the 4x. Okay. Then, um, if I take the derivative of this term, the 4 drops down, so I get a 4 c2 e to the 4x. The minus 8 stays here with this y prime because that's this term, not this term. The coefficient here in front of the y double primed is 1. This term requires another product rule, so I get a 4 c2 e to the 4x plus, and then 4 drops down, I get a 16 c2x e to the 4x. Okay, now I'm just going to do some algebra and simplify this. Um, I collect like terms here, and I get 8 c2 e to the 4x when I collect these two terms plus 16 c2, c2 x e to the 4x. I distribute the 8 through here, so I get a minus 8 times that term, minus 32 times that term. And then you'll see that if I just add up the 8 c2 minus 8 c2 term, that's 0. And then if I add up 16 plus 16 gives me a minus 32. Uh, 16 plus 16 gives me positive 32. Minus 32 gives us a 0, so check this term um, here, the c2 x e to the 4x is indeed a solution to the ODE, and um, I can factor out the e to the 4x, and I get this linear term, c1 plus c2x, times the exponential term. And that is the solution to this ODE. Okay, in the second part to this video, I explain, uh, mathematically at least, why um, this uh, x e to the 4x term shows up, and you get this linear term times the exponential. Okay, good luck.